Welcome back. It's week five. It is the Shadow Hawker sessions. And recently, you've just submitted an assessment task. So, congratulations. Well done. Thank you. And any luck, you'll start seeing some feedback about those tasks up on the wattle in the near distance soon. So, we're now into the applied end of the project. You've created an idea, you've pitched it, you've picked your platform, you've said what you want to do, and now it's time to play with the marketing mix. So on the fact that you have a value offer and you have a product, what we're gonna get you to do now is we're gonna get you to think about the pricing and the distribution of that product. So as a reminder, the content drift, if it happens, this is probably an at-risk week for content drift, given I've got to provide feedback uh, and I want to provide feedback on the assessment tasks. So it might be this week or next where there's a bit of drift and you should probably check out the Wattle for new videos and upcoming content. We are just approaching the marketing mix applications. This week, you're gonna do price and price will enable you to do some stuff in positioning and that will let you feed into some ideas in promotion. Distribution is going to be tied in no small part to the platform that you're using. But distribution also means ease of access, which ties back to some of the pricing factors. When we teach marketing and we teach the four Ps, we often teach them as silos. We teach them as independent operational parts. But yeah, as you're going to see, the reality is when you control the mix yourself, moving one affects all the other parts. So you want to be able to think about them as kind of like sliders where combinations make a greater impact than just individual elements. So as per the usual, it is, the, the slidos are up, the handouts are ready. Now, one of the things I'm gonna tell you is that your self-service, or the self-self internship, it's go time. You haven't got your grades back, but you need to start making your project happen. So get out there, make it, get into this first week of content, do stuff, create the project, get in there, get underway. Now the DLC challenges are still live on the forum, Get Hype and Team Identity. We wanna see you progress now. We wanna see you move into building the project, delivering the project, working on those aspects, and that's what today's episode is about. How can we use price and how can we use distribution to help you get this project to the market? So your first exercise, the task on the radar for you is let's ask the question around distribution. How do you get your product to your audience? Now, if we take the Shadow Hawker sessions, we use an automated distribution process. Each week, YouTube unlocks one more episode, which feeds through to a link in the Wattle. If you subscribe to the overall channel, you'll see the content pop up in the feed. So I'm using an automated distribution platform that pushes the content from server to subscriber. That has a couple of limits. It has a couple of strengths. One of its limits is that uh, YouTube's algorithm sucks and what you subscribe to doesn't always show up in your feed. The second challenge is that if you're accessing this through Wattle, it's a proactive active step of go to the week, go to the content for the week. If you're subscribed to this and you're getting it fed to you, it's a passive access. So those are two different platforms. Those are that's the same platform, two different processes. So active access through go to what or look for link, passive through it shows up in my subscription when I'm on YouTube. Of course, it's interactive access because the real value offer is in the exercises you undertake. So you filling out these forms and filling out these Word documents and responding to my prompts and cues, that's the real value. So to do that, you need to access the Word document, you need to engage with the ideas, you need, hey, look, Siva's up and see if it's in play. So, what we wanna do, we're gonna give you 10 minutes. So put 10 minutes on the clock, get your timer ready. You're filling out that first section. The part A, you know what it is, you know what it does, you know how it works for you. You're filling out the part B, and you're thinking about it in those four different ways. Are people proactive? Are they passive? Do they have to do something? And do they do something in partnership with you? You can also have a crack at the receiver if you fancy, but mostly I just want you to go for the first one. So. Activate that timer, pause the video, and I'll see you in a few minutes. Welcome back. Here's how it's gonna go. You've had a chance to look at your platform and think, all right, how do I reach out? 
So your question is, how does someone gain access to the value of the project? And I want you to really, really deep dive on this. So is the value of the Shadow Hawker session, the video, or is the value of the Shadow Hawker session your interaction with that Word document, which only comes as a prompt from me explaining what to do? Where is the true value? Where, where is it? And how is that price? This is the second aspect of the workshop. And you'll notice it's kind of a shorter aspect uh, for the workshop because there's a lot more heavy lifting. The next exercise is 15 minutes and it's a, it's a good one. It's a, it's a tough challenge. Now I need to remind you of two things in the theory base before I progress. First, price is what the customer pays to access the value. We are going to talk about the cost as a third exercise, as a post exercise, but it is not about what it costs you, it's about what it costs your audience. Here in e-marketing, we draw on more than just financial price. We are very much driven by the social marketers, this is the marketing for social change, the use of non-financial price. And you also see from our theoretical frameworks, so this ties back to, if you haven't watched the lecture, go and watch the lecture, honestly. Watch the lecture before you do the seminar. It's much, life's so much easier. In the lecture, you'll see that we talk about different types of pricing. One off, ongoing, and we talk about use, we talk about acquisition, we talk about disposal costs. Your challenge in the next 15 minutes is that you are going to put an estimated price tag on your project. So, for people to use your project, are there any financial costs? If you are running a Patreon, or you're running a YouTube uh, subscribers account, yes, there would be. What is the rent someone has to pay? If you are selling products, what is the average price someone has to pony up to get your product? So that's your financial. Of interest to us as well is what's the non-financial price? Now, I just wanna give you the quick example is it's usually about 20 minutes to play through the whole of the episode if you don't stop and do the exercises. So if you're the kind of person who goes, oh look, I'll watch the whole thing first, then I'll come back and I'll do the exercises, you're probably dropping an hour, hour and a half uh, on the self-service. So that's the time problem. But if you find you're sitting there going, oh, what, what's he asking? What's, oh, this is so hard. Then there's an effort price. But if you're going, oh, I got this. Oh, thanks for the prompt there, Steve. I've got this. I'm gonna type out a whole essay here in 15. Then maybe it's a low effort price. Maybe it's this is what we want you to do. We want you to consider what are the non-financial price points attached to the use of the value offer that you are providing to your audience. What has someone got to outlay in terms of money, time, energy, effort, learning curve, or whatever else is in our price structure, what do they have to do? And once you've set that up, I want you to think about how you can then you that price. Is it something that you can lean into as a strategy? Can you in fact have a luxury price? Can you embrace your price positioning and say, this is what I want to do. I will create now the appropriate strategy, positioning strategy that goes for the audience that I want with a price tag that suits what they're looking for. So, a lot of things to think about, 15 minutes on the clock and start the stopwatch. Pause the video, see you in 15. Welcome back mates, it is good to have you. Price, now it's an interesting one, 15 minutes. Was that long enough? Was it too long? So your question you wanna ask yourself now and what you probably wanna pop into the forum to have a bit of a chat about is how can you use price now in the real world? What does it cost someone to engage with your content? And remember, High price is not necessarily bad. Cheap is not necessarily good. If you were perhaps to create a new series of the well, Where's Wally, Where's Waldo style books and you were to release them on an Instagram on a weekly basis, well, the time people spent pouring over their phones going, where, where is it, where is it? That's a high cost, perhaps. And that could be a high value proposition. So remember, price can tie to value and price... Combining your price and your value proposition. All right, there is a thing I want you to do. Get out into the wattle. I'm going to be asking the live learning team to do this as well. Your project is real. Your project is yours. Your project is your case study. So you can answer this question. I want you to give me a statement. 
I want that statement to be as it is there. My project is using, and I want you to name your project, your price strategy. Now this is going to require you to think what your price strategy is, and I want you to think about the price strategy for your non-financial prices. Are you price skimming or are you price premium? What are you doing as a deliberate price strategy with the non-financial prices associated with accessing the value, accessing the project, getting hold of the project? Now, I run a YouTube channel and it is the pricing strategy is premium niche. I'm a niche product, I'm of small interest to a small cadre of people. I cost about 10 to 15 minutes every week, but occasionally I cost psychic damage because I tell a pun so bad people groan, or I make a reference that is sufficiently obscure, or you have to stop and Google things to figure out, what is he talking about now? Name your strategy, explain your strategy, and then look for partner projects. Look for people who are running a similar strategy to you. Try and build a positioning map of the subject of your project and your peer projects. Who's near you, who's opposite. Right, last thing to say. I want you to do a task for me between episodes. And I'll post this up in the forum. I'll give you a reminder next, next episode. I want you to spend a week tracking the costs associated with your project. Now this is something I did for my own project. So for my YouTube project, I spend about 30 dollars each episode on uh, the subtitling. Uh, my in-episode costs vary quite a bit. I have a particular element, uh, an unboxing, which is up to $50 worth of expenditure per box. So when I sat down to design season two, I went, okay, I want 10 boxes. That's $500 I've got to set aside for the unboxing. $300 I need to set aside for the captions. And so I'm at eight hundred dollars for I'm at eighty dollars an episode so far, and I haven't factored in other things um, around consumables that we've used. Particularly because part of what I did was I filmed a bunch of stuff on a road trip. So I spent three days on the road driving to Canberra, filming things here and there. So I've probably got an average episode cost of around one hundred fifty dollars cash. So I'll drop about fifteen hundred dollars on a season. I have got no revenue at this point in time. It is a hobby. It's a good one, but it's fun. But you need to start thinking early. How much is it costing you to run this project? And can I maintain that over time? Oh, and can I float the investment necessary to start making the revenue back later in the project's lifespan? Congratulations, you're an entrepreneur running a startup. You gotta work out what's gonna cost you, where's the revenue gonna come from, and how are you gonna cross fund it until it starts making its own money. And to do that, your first step is how much is it costing you? As always, get out in the forums, have some fun, enjoy it, drive the traffic for me. You are my team, I will depend upon this week because it's going to be really tempting for a lot of people to go, oh, I'm done, I, I submitted the assignment, I'll skip week four. Get in there, capitalize on the opportunity, post stuff, talk to people, engage, make stuff happen. Enjoy it. As always, you need me. There's my contact points. And it is the episode. We are done.